Hi friends, uh, so as you can see, uh, the table is not on the machine yet. Uh, reason is I wanted to make sure that everything was uh, done right, uh, final, before I put the table on. So, uh, and I think it is, I think it's, uh, it's ready. Um, <clears throat> last weekend, what I did, I installed the proximity switch for the X-axis. Um, and also I worked on the way lube system, so I hooked up the pump, um, the way lube pump, uh, and worked out how it works, uh, and it took, uh, some time, uh, more than I expected, actually most of the, the, the biggest part of the weekend uh, was just waiting for the lube to make its way all the, all the way through the longest of the tubes, um, and it's moving pretty slowly because this little pump uh, is, you know, pushing very tiny amounts at a time. Um, <clears throat> and the good news is the lube system seems to be working pretty well. Um, the quantities uh, look good to me and it's coming out from every uh, single uh, places. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's... Uh, going to work uh, great um, so yeah I'll uh, just move you closer and uh, we'll uh, have a look at uh, the whole thing in more details so um, first of all let's have a look at the limit switch this is how I decided to install it I tried all sorts of things but you know uh, there is not so much room in here and I wanted to have something quite reliable I think uh, this uh, was the best way to go, hopefully anyway. So uh, I uh, I machined the hole here uh, and uh, I also uh, drilled and tapped a hole on this in this block to accommodate a 3 8 bolt. So this guy can be adjusted uh, further this way or anywhere. And also that bolt can be uh, adjusted uh, this way. Um, so I think this uh, should be quite reliable. Over here, and you know, it's going to be quite well protected from chips. Uh, I hope so anyway. So uh, any chips that might uh, go there should fall down. And not so many chips should go there. So hopefully it's going to be quite well protected. <laughs> Um, this here is the hard stop, so uh, if uh, for some reason uh, the machine wants to go any for uh, you know, uh, doesn't read the switch or whatever, uh, this is the hard stop. These are Belleville springs, and if I turn the screw by hand, you might be able to see them squish a little bit. So uh, hopefully uh, the limit switch will never be crushed. Uh, and I, of course, I want it to be triggered before the hard stop touches uh, this uh, this block. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the, the limit switch. And uh, now we are going to have a look at uh, the way loop system. Okay, so uh, this uh, is my uh, way loop pump. It's a Bijor uh, D2990. That's the model. Um, and the way this uh, pump works is, um, uh, I have this uh, drawing here. Uh, you can see this uh, cam, uh, which is in here. And you can see this uh, lever here, which is this thing here. Uh, the motor, uh, of the pump is inside this uh, box here. And this here is uh, a, a plunger, uh, which is, uh, the pump really is this uh, plunger. So uh, um, let's look at this uh, drawing here. We have the motor, which has this uh, worm gear that makes this uh, uh, cam turn and as the cam turns, it pushes on this uh, lever here, which uh, pulls out the, the plunger. And every half turn, the cam releases the lever, the plunger, 
uh, with a spring probably inside in here is pulled back uh, it just moves back down slowly and this is what pushes uh, the oil into the, the lube um, system uh, this is four millimeter tube what else uh, this plunger you can pull it uh, manually if you like and this will and it'll just move back down and uh, send oil into the system so it doesn't even have to be connected uh, for testing or whatever uh, also um, the motor that is in here has been uh, replaced by uh, the previous owner and I'm not quite sure if it's the same motor that was in there before. The mine uh, takes 27 minutes for half a turn. So for one plunger cycle. Um, so I don't know if you guys uh, know uh, if this is the right motor or if I should change it. But uh, so far the amount of oil that comes out uh, looks good to me so uh, and you know I would guess that my uh, the previous owner would have changed the motor with a, a similar one the same one because there are depending on which motor you put in you can have different uh, cycles shorter cycles uh, also I don't know if I said that but uh, you have uh, an adjustment here with this uh, uh, the, 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 the plunger handle uh, if you uh, screw it all the way down, you get more oil into the system for each cycle. And if you uh, unscrew it, um, then the lever won't push it as high. And uh, so you'll have less oil into the system. I think you have uh, three, uh, just a second. We'll have a look into the, I think it's in the first page, it's here. You have a three sixteenth of an inch of adjustment, if I understand right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's it for the pump, I think. Um, we'll have a look now at the rest of the system. So, I've put the pump back, uh, not into its uh, resting place, uh, hopefully, uh, but it's uh, on the floor for now. So the line coming out of uh, the weight loop pump goes into this uh, manifold here. I'm sorry if it's a bit shaky, the video. Okay, so uh, this uh, manifold here, and these uh, things here are called metering valves. And they're, uh, they, they let a certain amount of oil, you know, they restrict uh, the flow of the oil uh, in different amounts. Uh, depending on uh, what they are lubricating um, and these are have different values and I talk about this in video 25 and also in video 26 I think uh, but in the description of video 25 I have a, a link to a document that describe um, the different values of these uh, metering valves and this also is a metering valve this line uh, um, is uh, for the x-axis uh, ball screw. Okay, uh, so following the line of the x-axis ball screw, this is the one here. Uh, it's moving into this drag chain, which I uh, tried quite a few different configuration, and this is what I settled on. So it's, uh, I tapped two M3 holes into the casting and uh, screwed the, the, the drag chain uh, with the Loctite so that it doesn't come, come off uh, with the vibration or whatever. And the way lube for the ball screw uh, comes out here and the, I'm going to uh, just uh, unscrew it by hand and it's uh, I tapped two uh, M3 holes 
um, into the, the this uh, block here and fixed the drag chain here. So uh, that's it for the X axis. Uh, the rest is uh, of my uh, the way I install these uh, wheel loop uh, lines uh, is all described into the uh, video number uh, 26, part 26, I believe. Um, what else? So the oil. Um, one thing I was quite uh, surprised with is uh, these here, uh, this one and uh, this one at the other end. Uh, the uh, the oil, the the turkite uh, for the, the the top of uh, this uh, this uh, rail here and this rail here. Okay, so the oil uh, this uh, this part here and uh, the turkite is uh, attached to the saddle itself and it has these uh, um, channels to let the oil um, uh, you know uh, move uh, everywhere into the turkite turkite or whatever so uh, imagine these uh, maybe i'll show you uh, a cad uh, image of what it's like but uh, yeah these channels and um, i was quite amazed uh, these holes were already there and the oil the wheel loop oil uh, started to come out from this hole and this hole here as well um, so the oil did all the way through the channel and came out through these and these weren't connected originally uh, with this machine so um, I uh, I thought of different uh, ways to deal with this just let it uh, seep out but I think this would have been uh, first it would have been a mess here and that excess oil uh, coming out here would have made a mess but also would have done nothing for the machine uh, you know I'd rather keep that oil um, between the 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 the, the tur turkite the saddle and the rails machine rails these rails so uh, another thing i thought of doing is installing a, a tube a line like this uh, from one end to the other so that uh, if there were for some reason uh, less oil on one side the pressure would equalize that would have been nice but uh, I think not necessary because the amount of oil that is coming out right now is uh, pretty much the same. It, it's a, it seems to be actually exactly the same. So I settled on just tapping uh, 1024 uh, threads into these uh, holes and putting some uh, blue Loctite and plugging the holes with the... Uh, um 1024 uh screws uh so yeah that's it for that uh, what else um over here the, the okay let's just quickly um this the the x-axis ball screw line is very long and it took forever for the oil to uh, go all the way in uh, and while the oil was moving up here it was coming out everywhere and leaking and so on. So this is why I've put these uh, paper towels. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the oil is coming out here and then I've uh, temporarily plugged the holes with a bit of red tape and a magnet here. But as you can see, oil is uh, coming out uh, generously through uh, both of these holes. Uh, you have uh, this line here for the y-axis uh, ball screw. What else, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it for the, the oil system, I guess. Um, yep, so that's it. Uh, next, I guess, is uh, installing the table.
All right, so uh, yeah, I guess that uh, concludes uh, this uh, video. Um, we're ready to put the table on, so that's uh, for sure will be the next video. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you uh, very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon uh, on the next one. Thanks, bye.